Hello guys, in today's video, I'm going to cover, among other things, how to use the run and runway command, use the run command to perform a search in a folder, pass parameters to programs while using the run command, and pass variables to another AutoHotKey script, and how to set up and use environment variable path. If you're interested in this topic, please continue watching. Welcome back. Now, the run command is nothing all that special to you. I understand that, but I think you might be able to get maybe one or two things out of this video. So please do continue watching if you are hoping to find anything new about it. I've got a whole bunch of examples right here. What I'm going to do is I'm not going to run every single lines of codes, but I'm going to show you examples of those that might be slightly more rarer and those that you may not be aware of. So with that aside, I'll make the start. All right, so this is the way to use the run command to launch a program, and that program is Notepad in my case. And this parameter that comes after the Notepad, and this is blank, this is working directory. I don't really use that. And if you put minimum, it means the Notepad will be launched in a minimized version. And maximum means maximized, and hide means hidden. So if I say, for example, if I run this and bring my taskbar over, I won't be able to see the notepad, right? But the notepad is running somewhere invisible from my view. So in order to determine, for example, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my PID as the variable to store my process ID of the newly launched program. And let me just display that out as a message box. And if I save this and run it, I'll be getting this message box that says that. That is the process ID of the notepad that just launched. And if I go to my CMD command prompt to go task kill FIM notepad exe, I'm going to get two notepads being terminated. And one of them will show this value in the process ID. And that is the second one right here. And that's how you know that the program that I have launched with the process ID that is assigned to it has been terminated and has been running in the background. Now, um, I think I can just skip that. That uses the my PID progress ID that I showed you just now. Now, other programs. I've got Rash Edit, and I don't really have to show you this, but I can run it. If I run this, I'll get a warning saying that it requires an admin access, which I press yes to, and then it launched that. Um, Chrome, and then, so Chrome has, I think it's already saved in the vari environment variable. Therefore, if you just provide the name of the application followed by the executable extension, then it just opens up Chrome. But if you have other programs in folders that are not designated as environment variables, then you have to provide the full path of the program in order to run that. And that, that last bit here is the additional parameter that you can provide while running the program. So if you put it separated by a space, so if you put a space and go www.google.com, if you run this, it's going to open up the main page of Google in Chrome. And I haven't explained to you what an environment variable is. An environment variable is a variable that allows you to not have to specify the full path of the application you're trying to run. So for example, you've got uh, Chrome and Regit edit here. Now this is probably added as a environment variable as you install Chrome. And therefore, when I run this program without the full path in the line, it still works. And I'll show you later um, how you can add other folders to the environment variables so you can run, for example, AutoHockey scripts without having to provide the full path to those AutoHockey scripts. Now, coming back to our Chrome example, if you want to pass multiple parameters, then all you got to do is you put a space in each of the parameters. And by doing this, I can open up all of these three websites. And by providing this parameter, I'm going to be able to open up Chrome in incognito mode, right? Out and if you use this parameter, user data there, 
then you're going to be able to use other Chrome profile other than the default one that you normally use when you launch the uh, Chrome as per the normal. Now, this is the way to run um, a program as an admin. And other AutoArchy script, you, you either can provide the name of the AutoArchy script if the AutoArchy script is in the same folder. Otherwise, you provide the full path. Or you can provide just the name of the AutoArchy script and have this folder, for example, in the environment variable list. Then you can just provide the AutoArchy script's name and it be able to successfully run that script while your main script is saved wherever. This is to open the folders and that has the same effect, explore. And if you want to open the file, just basically provide the whole path to the file and then to create an email. Now, if you have a uh, email client, I have one right here. This is the way to create an email on the go with some texts pre-populated inside the subject and the body and the contact now edit mode is to if you have read only file edit mode is the mode that allows you to edit the file and print is to print a file so for example i have got my folder here where my current script is saved if i go and create a text file so name tech new text document hello and if i run the script what's going to happen is it's going to use the default printing option to print the file and therefore my printer is printing the file now and next up is to open up the properties of a file if you use these commands and make sure you have the persistent mode on, then you can go straight to the properties window of a designated file like this. So if you want to go straight to it, then this is the way to do it. Now, this one allows you to run a search in a folder and the parameter that you provide before you provide the full path is find. And I have some lines of commands here to randomly search for a file that has test script in it and the type is auto hockey script so if i go ahead and run this what's going to happen is it's going to run a search in a folder of my choice so what this is doing is it's doing a search within this folder right within this folder for uh, a file that contains this string expand that out that has a type of auto hockey script all right so these are the basic examples and i'll be uploading this on my website and i'll show you a couple more things before i wrap up my video so run wait is another command that's a variation of the run command and this is useful if you were to for example uh run the second script the test script to here and i'm gonna add this to the second script this part save that and go back to my test script one hit save and run it now if i run this i get the message box as well as the tooltip which is from the second script so what this means is this run command is not waiting until this second script finishes what it's supposed to do and goes straight down to the message box. So if I instead use the runway command, I will be able to see this script waiting for the second script to finish and then show the message box. Okay. And if you want to pass a variable to another AutoHockey script, which can be useful if you have multiple scripts that you want to run. Um, Take that out, take this out. So this is gonna go in the first script. And the first script are going to have is going to have these two variables high and by. And I'm gonna use the run command to run the second script. And I'm going to pass these variables to the second script. And that's how you do it. So you space, you put a space 
before each of the parameters and then in the second strip in order for you to use the variables that are being passed in here these two my var1 and my var2 you create a loop like that and then a index is going to be the the values in the parameters um, one by one so the first one first one is going to first iteration of the loop will have the my variable one value in a index and i'm assigning it to variable and show it as a message box and because there are two parameters there will be a second iteration of the loop which will display the my variable two value so let me go ahead and save this and run it so my first script does not have any message boxes so it's not it's not supposed to do anything when i run this but because the second script has a message box command that shows me the names of the variables if i see the message box showing up like that it means my uh, values or var variables have successfully passed on to my second script okay and then uh, one last thing before i go into the environment variable is to handle an error so if you're dealing with a file that doesn't exist you're trying to run a file that doesn't exist then you can put in this value in this parameter to um, to handle the error so if I run this I'll see the message box that says error so error level gets set to capitalized error and if error level is error then you can take an action based on that okay now I'm going to show you how the environment variable path works in action so right now I've got test script 1 to 3 saved in this folder what I'm going to do is I'm going to move test script 3 to a new folder within this temporary scripts folder and oops my folder and in the test script 3 actually I have to reopen it it's going to create a message box that says hi right and if i try to run this test script 3 while my test script 1 is saved in a folder that is above that folder this is not going to work because it won't be able to find that so in order for you to do it you have to provide a full path to this uh to this folder when you run the test script 3. if you want to be able to run test script 3 in this situation while the script is saved elsewhere what you can do is you can go to start and type environment and you'll get this option to go edit the system environment variables you go in there click environment variables and then go to path there's another path here and that is applicable to all users on the pc and the one you see above is for the user that you are logged in as only so if you go into the path and then hit new to add that folder into here and end it with a backslash hit ok ok and ok and exit out of site and relaunch it and if i run this now it should should show me that message box that says hi which is in here which is saved in a, new, a different folder so in this manner you're able to run autoarchy scripts while the autoarchy script is not saved in the same folder and you can avoid having to provide the full path now this also works while you're trying to run the test script in windows run so you the way you can do it is you probably want to provide the you want, probably want to wrap the autoarchy script name in quotation mark and that is because if you have a space in the name of the file then you need to wrap the file name in quotation marks like that including the extension so if i go ahead and run this now it should work there you go but if i didn't have the folder added as an environment variable i would have had to uh, provide the full path to it in this manner in order for it to work all right, this is it for today's video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in your next video.